First, let's talk about the naming conventions that is pretty common between classes and textbooks when it comes to solving triangles. Now, um, what I'm going to do is at each vertex point where an angle is created, I'm going to use capital letters. So we're going to go A, B, C. I'll be pretty consistent about that with my examples. So if I have an angle A right here, directly across from that, that side will be little a. So that stands for a side length. Okay, Angle B, in this case, well, for a right triangle, angle B is a right angle. And directly across from that is little letter B, which happens to be the hypotenuse. And then, of course, the final angle, capital C. And then across from that is little c. All right, so in this example, the right triangle, a and C are legs and B is the hypotenuse. Now remember that for right triangles when you solve, try to find a missing length or angle, you need to use sine, cosine, or tangent. All right, We're not talking about that in this video series. Okay, I do have a, another series of videos that relates to solving right triangles, but now we're going to talk about these other kinds of triangles that are not right triangles. Well, you could have an acute triangle. An example would be something like this, where all three angles are less than 90. Okay. Now, there's different variations, of course, but uh, this is not an equilateral triangle, and it doesn't really matter. But an acute triangle would be a non-right triangle, and this one is an example of an obtuse triangle, Okay, meaning that it has one angle greater than 90. And I've marked it here with a red um, angle curve line. But again, in all cases, we're going to have a capital letter standing for an angle, and the side opposite that is going to be lowercase. So here we have angle A, side A, angle B, side B, opposite of that, and then angle C and side C. And the same for the obtuse triangle. So the first law we're going to talk about is the law of sines. Now again, using our standard uh, nomenclature here, our naming system of capital letters for angles and opposite sides are lowercase letters, this is what law of sines is. Now the law of sines talks to us about the ratio of the sine of an angle compared to its actual opposite side length. So the sine of angle A over A, that relationship is the same as sine of angle B over side B and the sine of angle C over uh, sine of a angle C over um, side C. All right, it's a relationship between the sine function of an angle and its opposite side. All right, now we can use this to write proportions for any of the missing parts, and it's really easy to remember. You just have to remember the sine of an angle compared to its side length. You could also take all those ratios and flip them upside down and have this. This is just another version of the law of sines. And it's just whatever version you want to use that's more convenient. Now, the law of cosines. So here it is, and it looks fairly complicated, but there is a pattern to it. And I want you to notice that a squared the square of the length of one of the sides, so look up at the diagram, there's A. Okay. Also at the very end we have cosine A. Okay. So this is one way to remember it, is that if you pick out one of the three sides, A or B or C, and you isolate it and say A squared, in the law of cosines you're going to have the cosine of that angle. All right. And then notice how we have B squared, C squared, and then B and C there. Okay. Notice it's all B's and C's here other than that cosine. Now this has two other versions. Notice that it's B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC. Notice the A and the C here are related. And at the end we have cosine B. So on the left it's B squared. On the very end of the right it's cosine B. And with the C version here we have C squared there and cosine of C there. So that's why it's called the low law of cos cosines. 
So the big question here is when would you use the law of sines? When do you use the law of cosines? Now in the future videos here, you're going to see examples worked out and you're going to have a chance to practice this and we'll talk about when you use each version. But for now, let me give you kind of the short version. If you know the information given in the triangle is angle, angle, side. Okay? Here's what that means. If you know one angle and another angle and a non-included side, all right, angle, angle, side as you go around the triangle, then you would use the law of sines. Another case would be angle, side, angle. That's two angles and an included side, such as angle A, angle B and its included side C, angle, side, angle. So in those two cases, you would use the law of sines and pick out which part of these ratios you would use. Now for the law of cosines, you're gonna use it when you are given side, angle, side, or side, side, side. If all you know are the length of the three sides, you can use the law of cosines, but it is going to take an extra step. It's going to be two steps altogether. What do I mean by side angle side? Well, if we have side B and side C, we have to also have the included angle A. All right, side angle side. Another example would be side B, side A, and it's included angle there, C, side, angle, side. 